Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Seth Thomas, I'm a student physical therapist assistant from Jeff State. Today I'm going to be talking to you all about acid and base disorders, specifically on metabolic acidosis and alkalosis. So when you hear that word, um, acid and base, you're probably thinking about pH, right? So to know what a deviation is, because that's what we're talking about, an acid and base going beyond the normal, we need to know the normal. So normal is 7.35, 7.45. Critical levels, 7.2, 7.6. The lower it gets, acidosis, the higher we get, alkalosis. So what we're trying to attain is homeostasis, or retain. So anything below what we just mentioned the norm was, we're going to get something outside of that. Okay. So we're going to have to do a little chemistry, unfortunately, to understand what's going on. So pH is measuring the acid and base in our blood, so we need to know what pH is. So we're going to use this formula, and I'm going to keep it right there. We're not going to do any other chemistry besides that, just to keep it simple. But we're going to focus mainly on the bicarbonate. pH equals bicarbonate divided by partial arterial pressure of carbon dioxide. That's the respiratory side of it, and that's uh, the partial is carbon dioxide, and bicarbonate is the metabolic, so we're mainly going to focus on deviations in the bicarbonate. But there's a direct relationship with um, bicarbonate and pH. If bicarbonate goes up, alkalo it's alkalosis. pH goes up. If it goes down, it's acidosis. pH goes down. All right. So uh, I, I went in a lot more depth before, and I ran over 18 minutes. So if you have any questions about going deeper into that, I'll do it. But we'll try to keep it simple. If bicarbonate goes down, pH goes down, acidosis. Kidneys are unable to excrete acid or conserve base. So we got these symptoms, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and muscle twitching, hyperkalemia. And the cardinal sign is hyperventilation. You're not getting enough O2, so CO2 is having to increase. That formula we did before has to go up. The partial arterial carbon dioxide pressure has to go up. To, uh, you know, bicarbonate's going down, that's going to have to go up to keep that balance. And one of some of the key causes, diabetic cataacidosis, I'm going to go over that in detail because there's some special implications to that. Severe diarrhea for the PT. Renal failure, shock. All right, next. And then we have alkalosis. This guy's looking a little sick because one of the cardinal signs for this one is vomiting. So we have causes, severe vomiting, diuretics, all right, um, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, tremors, hypokalemia. That's kind of key for this one. pH goes up, bicarbonate goes up main thing with this one is the body's not able to get rid of bicarbonate. Due to, um, if you throw up, all that fluid's leaving the stomach, and uh, the chlorine is not telling the pancreas, hey, you need to release bicarbonate, so it's retaining it. And um, if the kidneys are, um, they have too much aldosterone, they're also keeping bicarbonate as well, so they're just retaining it, not able to get rid of it. All right, next. So what's the physician going to do to check out these deviations. He's going to check, he sees someone with these symptoms, he's going to check out arterial blood class, blood, blood gas. Normal is, um, you're checking out the O2 and the CO2. So if someone's not getting enough O2, that's going to go down, and if the PaCO2 has to go up to compensate, you're going to get elevated levels, so they're, they're going to know if something's uh, amiss. Also, serum electrolyte testing. Sodium and potassium were pretty key in maintaining the balance. So like I said before, hyperkalemia, hypokalemia, they're going to see a deviation. They can tell if it's either acidosis or alkalosis there. Urine pH, you can go to the next slide. Um, that's a test that a patient can do on their own. You've got these strips, you pee on them, and if a certain color shows up on that test on the right, then you know something's amiss, either the pH or the ketones or something's going on that can let you know if you have acidosis or alkalosis. All right, what's going on with lifespan changes? So you have three com compensatory um, things that are trying to keep your body normal, homeostasis, the lungs, the kidneys, and the uh, endocrine system. So as we age, those uh, systems that try to balance this, they're getting worse. So we'll go to the first one and check out what's going on. So lungs, age affects ventilation and respiration, leads to functional impairment of gas exchange and decreases respiratory muscle strength and endurance. Decrease in O2, your body's trying to build up the CO2 to make up for it. So hyperventilation, but as you know, we get 
uh, older, our respiratory muscles get weaker. So just a part of aging there. Um, chemical effects of aging. Um, the key ones with this one is renin and aldosterone. Aging causes these hormones um, creation, breakdown, and action to decrease. And the, the, uh, causes a decrease in function with those. Our kidneys. So aging causes a decreased ability to excrete water confronted with increased fluid intake. So we get hyponatremia easierly. And like I mentioned before, ran and aldosterone, um, your body gets kind of resistant to it when it secretes. So it's like, you know, here, here this stuff is, but your body's like, you know, I don't, I'm not paying as, as much attention as I was before. This kind of gets resistant to it. So what's the prognosis for everybody? I hate to say it, but it depends. I kind of know why the teachers keep saying it. Because with this, you know, your average adult it depends on how big of an acid base rise drop you've experienced. If you've not caused, I mean, and it, if, if you've done too much, it doesn't cause permanent damage. So there's a lot of variables coming into play. Age is a factor, like we mentioned before. Um, with your lungs, if you have COPD, you're not able to get that CO2 out like you were before, so that's going to cause a decrease in compensation. If you've got a blood disease like sickle cell, um, blood, uh, the blood cells aren't able to hold O2 like they were before. Um, so you have a decrease in that. Kidneys disorders, if you have hyperaldosterone, your kidneys aren't um, doing their job to compensate. So there's a decrease in that. Also, diabetes plays a factor. And also, if you have organ failure, lungs or kidneys are gone, well, you can't compensate either. So it all depends right there. All right, medical treatment. For acidosis, most physicians will use sodium bicarbonate to address the electrolyte imbalance. You don't have a lot of bicarbonate, they give you some. Pretty simple. And also, in the cases, they're going to have a ventilator to assist you with um, the O2 return, because that's a huge part in maintaining uh, homeostasis. With alkalosis, there's two different sides to it. Um, you're out of potassium normally in these cases, so they're going to give you some potassium. And also, if your adrenal glands are making too much aldosterone, the doctor's going to get rid of one. But if both are kind of messed up, then he's going to block the receptors. All right? Physical therapy, so what do we do here? PT does not treat the medical diagnosis, but you know, rather the impairment of functional limitations, we all know that. So whatever the patient's got going on is gonna affect their body and their function, so that's what we're gonna treat. But in most cases, this is a broad spectrum, but in most cases, I'll try to narrow it down, impairments are gonna be muscle weakness generally. Your body's trying to keep homeostasis, so, it's not all the O2 and everything's not going to the muscles, so they're getting weaker. And also, your respiratory function will decrease if prolonged acid or base dysfunction. So, what do we do? If a patient suffers from hypoventilation or hyperventilation, compensatory you know, things, uh, he or she will benefit from more efficient oxygen carbon dioxide exchange. According to the study done by Lawrence P. Callahan, greater pulmonary function was associated with greater improvement in dyspnea and ventilator muscle strength after inspiration muscle training. So we try to get these muscles strong to help out the patient. Next, therapeutic exercise has been shown to help prevent muscle atrophy and to help maintain increased functional mobility in everyday activities. Benefits were developed, uh, Lucy Brosse said, benefits were developed from the therapeutic exercises, especially strengthening exercises and general physical activity particularly for the management of pain and improvement of functional status. So most people with this going on, especially if they've had chronic conditions, they're going to be in a dilapidated state. So we're trying to maintain function, keep them moving. And most importantly, education. So this is most important because, uh, you know, hopefully the patient has been instructed in what's going on, but it's also our job to make sure they understand, hey, you've done this to your body, you need to watch out what you're taking in and putting in your body, and also that they may maintain a healthy lifestyle. So our job is to check vitals regularly, make sure they have their pH assessed, and that help make sure that they're moving to a more healthy lifestyle. Emphasize, and sometimes we have to emphasize the dangers of what they're doing, um, so that renal failure and diabetic acidosis can happen. So I mentioned this before, one of the causes of acidosis, this is key for us therapists, this is a life-threatening problem that affects people with diabetes. It occurs when the body cannot use sugar, glucose as a fuel source, because um, you know there's no insulin. So fat is used instead. 
As fat is broken down, acids called catatones build up in the blood and urine. At high levels, catatones are poisonous. If it's not treated, it can lead to severe illness or death. So one of the things is fruity breath with a DKA. So if a patient starts having, having those symptoms, then we're like, let's get medical assistance, call the doctor. We won't do therapy if potassium levels are 3.2 or 5.1 or below. No exercise. And like I said, fruity breath, let the doctor know. And if we see hot heart rate, blood pressure, and signs of dehydration, we need to kind of take it easy. Um, and also, if these symptoms of metabolic acidosis and alkalosis, uh, if they kind of get out of hand, we got to see a physician or kind of take a break from treatment. So the body's compensating to maintain or acquire homeostasis. So the body's usually in a deconditioned state. So we got to go to the patient's state, use good energy conservation techniques, um, and take breaks and do, do what the patient can do, looking at the whole person. <clears throat> Lastly, in conclusion, it's common for most to have heard of pH before, but it would benefit every individual to learn about acid-base disorders. The key is knowing what is standard and monitoring anything we put in our bodies that has potential to tip the balance. Also, maintaining an act active lifestyle will decrease the risk of developing acid-base disorders. Awesome. If you guys have any questions, my time's up. Let me know. Enjoy it.